Vegemite. I've never smelled it or tasted it in my life. I mean, I grew up eating this stuff. Hold on, I have a knife crotch. Uh -huh. Is it made out of vegetables? Yeast, I think. So it's like beer, whatever's left over from the brewing process. All right. Mm, this is a spread for bread and stuff? Yeah. It tastes like it should go in a soup. It tastes like bouillon. You're mixing it with stuff, usually. All right, I'm gonna spread it on bread. Spread it with cheese, or just like Too that. Too thin? No, it's pretty good. Do you guys not know about jelly, peanut butter, Nutella, things like that? It's too sweet. It's very confusing. This is like a savory breakfast. Savory breakfast. Nutritious. I don't understand. How do you define Australian cuisine? With influences from indigenous traditions, European colonizers, and Asian immigrants, the answer is not so straightforward. When it comes to cuisine, I mean, Australia is known for... Um, Hold on. What are you guys doing for? Yeah, the fat white. What's that? It's like an Australian coffee. Oh. It's like a latte that we rebranded. You put milk in it? We put more milk in it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So I would rather ask, what sets this place apart from anywhere else on Earth? Australia, one of the world's largest continents, sprawls over 3 million square miles with a population of about 25 million. Due to millions of years of geographical isolation, this country has some of the most unique wildlife in the world. One of the biggest going as I've seen. These animals don't just add to the landscape. They're hunted, caught, or gathered, serving as ingredients to a distinct food culture. This is something that you can't try anywhere else. I mean, you had to be either here or pretty darn close to here to be able to experience this. That's why, on this one-of-a-kind food tour, we're skipping the bistros, diners, and restaurants. Instead, we're exploring Australian food. Get off the road! Oh, shouldn't that. Through its wildlife. Like the kangaroo, native to Australia and outnumbering the human population. There are three times the population of kangaroo to humans in Australia. Wait, wait, Here in Western on. Australia, they're hunted by night. Then cooked up and eaten by day. Medium rare, so you need to cook it. It looks... Good? Is this how it's supposed to look? Yep. There's the emu, an icon of this country and the world's second largest bird. Their ears are wild. It's just big holes in the back of their head. It's like the first edition of ears. Prized for its fat and loved for its deep, dark red meat. This organ right here is the emu's gizzard. Wow. Let's have this for breakfast. If you prefer something more exotic, possum sunny. Try hunting down some tree-dwelling possums. These mid-sized marsupials can be braised down into a shockingly delicious dish. There's five million possums in Tasmania. I mean, what would happen if you didn't hunt them at all? There'd be a lot more. Once you hit the coast, you'll find some of the world's most diverse underwater ecosystems, where you can pluck out giant black-lipped abalone. Dude, that is a huge-ass abalone. Or, if you're really good, you can get your hands on a massive red rock lobster. Holy <laughs> This is the heaviest seafood I think I've ever held in my life. However, amid Australia's bountiful wildlife, some hunting traditions are not easy to swallow. Oh, left, left, yards, left. Here, some local communities are given exclusive rights he's there, he's there, he's there. to hunt green sea turtles. Got him. A ritual culminating in an unforgettable beachside barbecue. What is this green part? That's of um, fat. Oh. oh, dude, what? That's fat? Yeah. This is Aboriginal food, and any discussion of Australian food would be incomplete without acknowledging this land's first inhabitants. What up? Even thousands of years ago, these guardians survived and thrived on the bounty this land provided. Dude, this is terrifying. Bro, how the hell did you see this, Elijah? Now, Aboriginal descendants still cook fare like stingrays, iguanas, or kangaroos, just as they did thousands of years ago. Oh, wow right into the thigh. Dude, that is way more juicy than I thought looking at the outside. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew? Sorry. Good day. Good day. Joining me on this far-out outback adventure, my buddy, Andrew Fraser. We've shared extreme eats in Northwest Vietnam. Let's enjoy. Let's go. Cheers. And traversed the Mongolian steppe, living as the nomads oh, do. Even my legs are starting to cramp. This is tough work, man. This time, Andrew will rediscover his homeland with a fresh perspective. Oh, that is like pure white meat. Oh, dude. This is completely alien to me, man. Don't say no, you 
Together, we're on a mission to unearth the wildest. Wow, it looks so cool. Most unique food stories of this vast land. It's kind of like a sausage, but you know, circular. Oh, like a pie or something. It's like a pie to me. Yeah. Oh, the Australians are ganging up on me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just about the animal protein. It's the people and the history that bring each dish to life. If you're wondering how to define Australian food, well, you're about to find out in 24 hours. So, we just got back. Wow. I can say that affected me a lot more than I thought it would.